Trolls are evil and terrifying creatures that dwell high in the mountains in sinister hidden caves. It is said that these terrifying beings were wicked and hostile and always stayed away from humans. However, when they encountered a human, they could be truly ghoulish creatures. According to Scandinavian mythology, descriptions of these terrifying creatures have been varied, and they are depicted as giant creatures, although they can also be very small creatures, with exaggeratedly strong and long arms, with prominent ears, noses, and chin, being recognized mainly by their large pointed nose. Their hair is wild and shapeless, varying in shades of greenish and gray. When travelers pass through the forests and mountains, and perceive the smell of food in the air, or sometimes heard cattle grazing deep in the forest, most likely there was a troll very close, so they should pass that way faster, as they could be easy prey for the trolls. In general, trolls used to live in large herds when they were small, facilitating various tasks such as hunting for survival. However, it is said that when trolls are large they usually live completely alone, securing food on their own. Although trolls also lacked intelligence the bigger they got, this did not impede being malevolent. Trolls always used to go out to work and hunt at night, since according to the myth these hostile beings could not receive sunlight because they would end up petrified forever. Trolls could become extremely dangerous beings, because their great strength and audacity when it came to getting food, or their whims, was surprising. It is said that over time these mythical creatures sought to lighten their tasks by stealing the work of humans as they possess the ability to become invisible and transform themselves into animals. In this way, they managed to go unnoticed by human homes where they stole wealth, food, and even children. According to legend, trolls enjoyed stealing the newborns of the settlers, and these replaced those children with dead or deformed fetuses, leaving great confusion in the Scandinavian villages. When a family realized that their child had been changed, they immediately alerted the whole town to warn them because trolls always came back for more children to kidnap and devour them. But according to the myth, not all trolls are bad, as there is a story where the origin of the kind trolls is narrated. It is told that in a remote Nordic village lived a solitary giant troll. He was very feared by the people of the village, because he never showed any emotion on his face, and always carried a gigantic rock mask. His appearance was really frightening, as he had a long nose, yellowish eyes, pointed ears and was very plump. He was also extremely tall. It is said that he was more than 50 meters tall. The local people were always on the lookout for any activity that he was doing, as they feared that the troll would wipe out the whole town along with them, so they called him Destroyer. Therefore, he was always in the rocky mountains chopping rocks. No one dared to approach him and everyone avoided meeting Destroyer on the road, which made this feared being even more alone. One day, while a farmer was returning from his daily work in the mountains, he passed by a path that led to the village, and in the middle of the journey, he came face to face with the dreaded troll. Frightened, he did not let the fear invade him and continued walking. The man could not stop wondering why he was always cutting rocks, so he stopped, took a breath, and said, Why do you spend your days cutting rocks from the mountain? What are they for? The giant troll turned and looked from head to toe at the little man who was talking to him, and replied, I am tired of being alone, so I will form a world with a gigantic army where I will rule forever, and I will pass over everyone who gets in my way. From today I curse you and all humans. Trembling, the farmer tried to retreat slowly from the destroyer's front, continuing on the path that would lead him to safety, and as soon as he was a little away from the troll, the farmer began to run desperately calling for help, shouting so terribly that when he was entering the village, almost all the inhabitants had already heard him. The farmer began to tell what had happened to him on the hillside. Full of fear, he told the inhabitants that the troll was preparing something terrible against them and that there would be no escape. Everyone in the village was frightened, so that same night they called a meeting to plan the death of the troll that was about to attack them. At nightfall, furious, the peasants of the village proposed to go in search of the gigantic troll and finally kill it with the strength of all the villagers. No one in the village opposed the idea, so at that moment, they went out to look for all kinds of weapons that could be used to attack and get rid of the gigantic troll. Once armed, men, women, and children set out on the journey to the high mountains where the destroyer lived. 
Flaming torches, picks, spears, rocks, and others were carried by the townspeople in their hands, while they shouted loudly, Death to Destroyer! When they arrived at the place where the troll lived, surprisingly, he was already waiting for them seated and with a serene face. The crowd approached the destroyer and told him that they were there to finish him off because they would not allow him to attack the people of the town and that at that moment, he was a terrible danger to the community. The smiling troll said, I was waiting for you. I knew you would come because I planned all this since you were the ones I needed to create my new world. Immediately the troll took his gigantic rock mass and hit it with an enormous force against the rock that passed by every day, causing thousands of rocks to bury alive the inhabitants of the village, which unfortunately were at the foot of the mountain. All those who went to kill the troll ended up buried under tons of rocks, giving no sign of life. But the destroyer's blow was so violent that he also ended up buried under the immensity of rocks. Six days and six nights passed, and there was still no trace of the settlers. It seemed that they had perished under the rocks. However, on the seventh day, the rocks began to move more and more intensely, until hundreds of creatures began to emerge with an appearance very similar to the appearance of the troll destroyer. And as one by one they emerged from the rocks, they recognized themselves and the others. Their appearance had changed, but they were still the same people that the troll had buried, bewildered. They looked at each other and as they talked, they understood that the troll's magic had changed them, just as he had wanted at the beginning so as not to feel alone. They all began to search for the destroyer and saw how he had also been trapped under the rocks, but unlike them, he was already dead. All the townspeople returned to their homes and decided to go on with their lives as they used to do when they were humans. But now they were trolls and in time they realized that they had developed magical gifts, which they began to use to do good, spreading throughout the Nordic peoples. A mystical story is described in the legendary saga about Halfdan Branyafost, which tells of a great journey Halfdan had after escaping from his father's kingdom. The story tells that Halfdan had several governmental problems with the great Viking warrior Sodi, and that both of them confronted each other cruelly in combat. However, Sodi was a respected warrior and was about to assassinate Halfdan, so he decided to escape in order to survive. In his exile, Halfdan heads for Byarmaland to take refuge until he can organize a plan for his return. But during the journey, he is bewitched by a grotesque and ruthless troll called Iron Nose. The spell of the terrible troll forced him to be shipwrecked on the shores of Helioland, far away from his destination. As soon as Halfdan sets out to scour the place to make sure he would be safe, he came across three imprisoned children. As soon as the children saw the man, they screamed desperately for help. Therefore, Halfdan, dumbfounded, approached them and decided to help them. There he freed the three children who were imprisoned by the troll and his wife. He continued walking through what seemed a nauseating prison of trolls. Further on he heard the voice of a woman calling him for help. Immediately, Halfdan ran to where the voice came from to see what was happening, and being already in the cell, he saw a nasty troll woman. The woman tells Halfdan to please help her get out of there for she had been kidnapped by the great troll Iron Skull, and he had cast a spell on her to become a troll woman. I am Branna, the daughter of the King of Valan, please help me to escape, the young woman said. Halfdan recognized the king's daughter and decided to help her out of the macabre confinement in which she was being held. Once freed, Branna told Halfdan that she wanted to take revenge on her captor because he had been very cruel to her, and she wanted to finish him off. So Halfdan agreed to help her, and they began to plan the way to kill him. The brave warrior Halfdan cleverly confronted the Ironhead Troll and his companions. As it was known, the trolls lacked intelligence the bigger they were, so Halfdan took advantage of their clumsy carelessness to attack them and finally killed them without delay. In gratitude, Branna provided them with protection, and Halfdan is given a protective magic ring that would make him invulnerable to sharp weapons and a dracker. Branna sends Halfdan to England where he wins the love of Marsabil, daughter of the English King Olaf, marrying her and succeeding Olaf on the throne after his death, after overcoming the wiles of the king's lieutenant thanks to Branna's magic. After this, Halfdan returns to his father's kingdom and defeats the dreaded Sodi and his horde of Vikings.